Okay guys, so uh, what I have here is the uh, Celestron Power Seeker 80AZS <clears throat> and uh, I just kind of wanted to do this review on it here for anyone interested in maybe picking up one of these uh, see uh, if, uh, if it'll be a good uh, first scope for someone who's uh, interested. So it's uh, Celestron's pretty good not a bad company and uh, Power Seeker is a pretty popular line uh, for them as well uh, it's kind of an entry-level line uh, but if you're just starting out that's the best way to go you want to go with uh, with a you know entry level you don't want to spend a whole lot of money right out at the top and then find out that you don't enjoy doing it All right so so this is the 80 Power Seeker 80 AZS it's a refractor uh, <clears throat> so it's 80 because it is 80 millimeter aperture across the front lens. AZS is an alt azimuth, alt -azimuth mount, so that's, uh, that's the style of mount that's on this, which is a very good mount for a uh, beginner. And uh, the S stands for short, so it's a shorter tube. It has a, uh, a 400 millimeter focal length and <clears throat> a 5 by 24 uh, finder scope right here. Uh, it comes with uh, two eyepieces, uh, a 20 millimeter and a 4 millimeter, um, which are both pretty decent. Uh, as far as the thing is, aperture is a lot more important than your eyepiece. So all these telescopes basically will come with, you have the same size eyepieces with all the different telescopes. <clears throat> but the, the, the biggest factor is going to be your aperture. The size of your the aperture here in the front is going to determine how much light that your telescope uh, can collect. So 80 millimeters for a beginning um, refractor, in my opinion, is very good. So you're going to get a lot of light coming in here more so than a 50 millimeter, a 60 or a 70. And uh, so it's going to be a, a wide field of view, which is what you're really what you're looking for. So back here you have your focuser. It's a, a single stage focuser, but uh, it works quite well. You have a bit of a swivel right here. Uh, I would recommend getting uh, a chair, like I'm sitting in a chair now, when you're using this, uh, you're going to want a chair because it's a little bit low, so if you're sitting in a chair, it's much more comfortable. Uh, another viewing tip as well is if when you're looking to cover one eye fully, so you can have both eyes open when you're, uh, when you're viewing, so it's not straining. It's a little it's harder to focus, you know, if you only have one eye open. So, that is the focuser. Uh, things you can see, you can see pretty much, you can see lots of stuff with this thing. Uh, so, well, I could just barely make out uh, the cloud bands on Jupiter, which I thought was pretty good for a beginner scope. Uh, that's on a really clear night. You might be able to get, if you get that focus right, right where it needs to be. Um, you can easily see the rings on uh, uh, Saturn. Uh, which is probably which is one of the coolest things to look at in my opinion. Uh, yeah, you can easily see the ring. Um, you can view the moon great with it. Uh, uh, you know, Orion Nebula, Pleiades, a couple of these different, you know, the more the popular uh, stuff to look at for uh, with a beginner scope is all really good in my opinion. This was my first telescope and. Uh, uh, I would highly recommend it as a first telescope. So it's, um, what was it? I think it was 189 Canadian. So it was almost 200 bucks Canadian, which is about 150, a little, maybe a little more than 150 bucks uh, American. So, I mean, you can't go really go wrong with that. Uh, I mean, nowadays with telescopes, um, I guess you could, could get a really crappy one, but you, there's no need to spend a real ton of money to get uh, a good enough telescope for for that beginner, right? He wants to, uh, he's just starting to get into it. This would, 
is plenty and it it's easy to use especially with this style of mount you can get equatorial mounts as well and they're a little more complicated but I would, I would recommend a uh, this this style of mount so that you don't get too confused and you know irritated trying to figure out how to use the mount properly so this is very straightforward you can take this out you can just start viewing things uh, immediately uh, another thing you're going to want to line up uh, your finder scope with your main scope which is also pretty simple to do in the daytime if you want to go out and just pick a object far off in the distance use your uh, you know your low power eyepiece and uh, have a look through here, focus it in, and just using the, uh, the different knobs, adjustment knobs here, just make sure you're, this is pointed in the same as this, and that's going to get you pretty close. Uh, as you get used to using this mount, you almost, you can almost just pinpoint objects just using this, if, but, uh, but that is, this finder scope is helpful, of course, for finding uh, smaller things. Uh, the tripod is pretty sturdy. Uh, in my opinion, I haven't had problems with it. I really haven't had any problems with this telescope in general. Um, one thing that I would recommend is maybe uh, buying a uh, an eyepiece kit. Celestron makes a uh, kind of a cheaper eyepiece kit. I think it's about fifty, around fifty bucks, uh, and it has a, a fifteen millimeter and a, a nine millimeter uh, eyepiece and um, a couple of filters as well. So you have a moon filter and a few other filters for the planets, I think. But, because uh, the four millimeter is almost too close. Really, so the, it comes with a 20 and a four. So 20 is good wide field view. You get nice shots of the moon, even deep things, space things, you can see them. But with a 15 and a nine, it's kind of like, uh, almost kind of the sweet spot for this telescope, in my opinion. But, uh, so you could look into maybe upgrading your eyepieces, your eyepieces. Other than that, uh, in my opinion, I think it's a great beginner telescope, so uh, you guys just, you know, uh, let me know what you guys think. If anyone out there has one of these, maybe you want to leave a comment about that, or you have a question about this that I haven't covered here, which is very possible, uh, because I'm just kind of speaking. So, there you have it. The Celestron Power Seeker 80AZS. Thanks for, thanks for watching.